Hey guys, so the Linux enthusiasts among you will probably already be aware of this, but there is a new version of Ubuntu out and about, Ubuntu 14.04. And today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions of its little brother, Lubuntu 14.04, which was released at the very same time. Now, Lubuntu 14.04 under the hood is almost identical in every way to Ubuntu. But when it comes to uh, the user interface, it uses a different desktop environment. It uses LXDE, which is supposed to be lighter on resources and, in my humble opinion, a little bit more stable and easier to use as well. So I'm going to be showing you the install process and basically what I think of the, uh, well, my first impressions really more than anything else. This isn't really going to be a tutorial on, on how to install it. I'm really just going to be giving you my review on the install process. But take away whatever education you, uh, you would like to from this video. So I'm going going to go through this process, this install process blind, but I have installed previous versions of Lubuntu many, many, many times before on many different machines. And the reason I'm doing Lubuntu rather than Ubuntu is because many people will be um, looking to change their system from Windows XP because Windows XP is not being supported anymore. And um, to me, at least, Lubuntu seems to be like the logical next step to keeping that particular XP machine alive because this version of Ubuntu is light on resources and it's pretty easy to use because well most people who are going to be looking at keeping a hold of their Windows XP machines are probably not going to be that into their machines so they're probably going to want a reasonably uh, sort of uh, well smooth running uh, and easy to use operating system which isn't really going to get too much in the way of what they're already used to and I think Lubuntu and LXDE are pretty much that operating system and it just so happens that they seem to have you know it was released at just the right moment uh, I don't know if that's coincidence or not but this is also an LTS which uh, stands for a uh, long-term support release which means that this version of Lubuntu is going to be supported for five years so uh, that basically means five years before you have to really worry about upgrading which is quite nice so I'm going to talk a little more about my opinions on Lubuntu as a uh, distribution in its wider capacity throughout the install process. But without further ado, let's begin by selecting our language. So as you can see here, I've got it up here. Um, right. Uh, English, believe it or not. Yeah. OK, so we can install it now or we can try Lubuntu without installing. Well, I've done a bit of a dry run process to see if it actually uh, works on the live CD and it does. So I'm going to install Lubun Lubuntu. Uh, I apologize in advance if I accidentally refer to it as Ubuntu. These words aren't exactly the easiest to distinguish between. But, uh, que sera, sera. So, um, I did a video a while ago, which seems to have actually done quite well, uh, called uh, Why I'm Ditching Linux Mint in Favor of Ubuntu, or something to that effect. And uh, I did actually try Ubuntu for about a week, um, but the Unity interface just, I really didn't like it. So I actually ended up going back to Mint, but I actually ended up going back to Mint 13, yeah, Mint 13, which was a long-term support release as well. I wanted to see if long-term support releases were actually any good, and um, it turns out they really actually are. Um, they support Steam, as does this. This uh, actually supports Steam, believe it or not, which is probably going to be a prerequisite for a lot of people. Um, so yeah, English. And um, and I would and, and this is, of course is going to be uh, uh, supporting Steam. So we're connected to the internet. We have at least four point six gigabytes available uh, drive space. Uh, okay, so we're not going to install the third party in the updates, even though I do actually recommend checking those boxes. But for the sake of keeping this tutorial short, um, we're just going to install what's currently on the uh, the ISO. Okay, so the computer currently has no detected operating system. Like I said, I'm going to be running this in a, uh, or I am running this in a virtual machine. I'm not actually running this on a PC. And I'm doing that just so that I can show you the, easily record the, the process for you. Uh, but if you were, for example, overwriting Windows XP so that you could actually use um, Lubuntu, so that you could install Lubuntu, you would probably want erase disk and install Lubuntu. Make sure, for the love of God, that your files are backed up because it will completely wipe your hard disk drive. Linux veterans will, of course, know this and will think that I'm just being dumb by even saying this, but um, people who are installing new operating systems might not know that when you do, it completely erases everything that's on your hard disk drive, which means that you need to either back it up to CDs or an external hard drive or to something like Dropbox, actually. Dropbox is actually a very good service which works on both Linux and on Windows, and I'm pretty damn sure it works on Mac as well. Uh, and you can actually um, keep all your files on the cloud and you can actually back up without having to worry about, you know, having to take time out of your day to do so. 
You can also encrypt the new Lubuntu installation directory for security. Um, you can use LVM for different volume management or something else. Something else is for more advanced um, uh, hard disk setups. I, w I tend to keep my home partition on a separate part of my hard disk drive, but for the sake of keeping this simple and straightforward, I'm just going to be uh, carrying on with the default settings. And if you are willing to completely erase your hard drive, or if you want to erase your hard drive and completely uh, clean it out, um, then that would be the option that you would want to choose. Okay, so of course, where are we? We're in, well, we're, we're in, look, close enough is London. Uh, of course, you will probably want to select your uh, your own country. So um, one of the big problems that we have here in the UK is that um, people often select English US for their keyboards, and whereas the general um, key, most of the keys on the keyboard are actually in the same place, uh, little ones like the at key are in the wrong ones, uh, are, are, are switched with quotation marks, double quotation mark keys. So when you're checking your keyboard to make sure that it's not set on the US but set on the UK, make sure that um, the at key and the double quotes, that's shift and the number two, um, actually are the right way around because that, that's just your quick surefire sign to make sure that you're, you're on the correct UK keyboard. I don't know what the situation is with Max in this uh, circumstance. Um, okay, so my name. Computer's name, yeah, Chris at VirtualBox. Um, right, pick a password. Just for the sake of easiness, so I'm going to log in automatically, but that is, you know, like, if you want to be vaguely uh, security conscious, you probably want to require your password to log in. You can also encrypt your home folder. Okay. And then we should begin at it. Uh, yes, beginning the install process now. And of course, because this is on a virtual machine, this is going to be a lot speedier than if you were to do it uh, yourselves. So in order to actually get to the install process, what you have to do uh, is either uh, download the ISO file, download a file from uh, the, L the Lubuntu website, which I will, of course, put down in the description below. And it will give you like an ISO file, which you need to use then use a program to actually burn it to a CD. Then you can restart your computer, boot off the CD, and then it will take you into the install process, which I started the video on. Um, you will probably want to Google that before you actually engage in such a process, because the way I described it was very much oversimplifying the process. You can also uh, write the uh, ISO file to a, hard, uh, to a USB drive if you don't want to have to burn a whole CD. Now, I generally prefer using long-term support releases of um, Ubuntu now because I use my computer for work, it needs to be stable, and upgrading once every six months just isn't practical for me. If you are an open source enthusiast, if you are a Linux enthusiast, then you'll probably want to upgrade every uh, every six months. So um, yeah, depends how, uh, how into your computer's operating system you are, determines how often you want to upgrade. Personally, I'd rather upgrade every two to three years because it's just, it's easier that way. Once I found a setup that works, once it's, you know, once I found something that works, there's no point in fixing it until um, until you really have to, until the support runs out. Um, but again, if you want the latest bells and whistles, then you will uh, you probably want to upgrade. So uh, what have we got here? It tells us here some of the extra bits and pieces that we're installing. Some extra packages. I think if I'm correct, these are... I don't know. We can skip them though, so they're obviously not essential files as far as I'm aware. I think they might be language packs. It tends to like to ins install language packs for some reason. Um, uh, because it, I don't know, for some reason uh, Ubuntu seems to see value in installing a lot of lang language packs. M maybe someone who speaks Gaelic might decide to use your computer one day, who knows. Um, but yeah, I mean, part of Ubuntu's philosophy is to be inclusive. And I've got to admit, when an operating system brings out um, Gaelic versions and Welsh versions of its operating system, you have to give them props for that, because um, it is, it's being inclusive to, uh, to communities which are usually, you know, sort of pushed out of the mainstream uh, technological uh, scene. So, um, 
So yeah, if you are looking to sort of upgrade a Windows XP machine that's, you know, breathe life into old hardware, the expression goes, then you will probably be wanting to use this particular uh, brand of Lubuntu. I actually use Lubuntu on my machine here, my main machine, or I'm going to, um, because it's stable. I actually find it to be the most stable desktop environment, um, and the long-term support release, the, the, re the release that they've released today, that's... Um, going to be it's going to be supported for five years but the next opportunity to upgrade properly is going to be in two years time um that's that's um you know i don't have to worry about my operating system for another two years or at least i hope i don't um installing an operating system this early on particularly a linux and ubuntu one there are going to be some bugs and kinks that are going to be needed to work they're going to we're going to need to work them out basically so if you are really quite concerned about stability if you really are quite concerned about an easy transition from say xp to Ubuntu, i might leave it a week or two rather than um than upgrading as soon as you get the opportunity to but um but um i, I you know i've been uh, messing around with linux for quite some time now so uh, so uh, it's not gonna be too much of a problem but it is it's a lot more secure um and also, the uh, you, know, you don't really have to worry too much. Uh, well, you don't really have to worry at all about viruses and uh, and that kind of thing as well when you're using uh, Lubuntu. Uh, I um, I uh, bought my mum a, a netbook the other day, which had it had a really crummy operating system on. I think it was some bastardized version of Windows CE, and it really didn't let you do much at all. So I installed Lubuntu onto it, and um, and and. To be fair, my mum, God bless her, isn't the most tech-savvy person around. Um, she's picked it up and used it without any problems whatsoever. Uh, Lubuntu is probably one of the best operating systems you can use on netbooks. Um, because netbooks, again, aren't exactly high-powered machines. Um, so having something quick and snappy works really well for... Um, you know, it works really well here. And the thing that I do quite like about Lubuntu and why I do actually put um, newbies onto uh, LXDE uh, and Lubuntu rather than Ubuntu is because Lubuntu, first of all, it keeps its user interface the same. It doesn't keep changing things up all the time. Um, like, well, well, like GNOME and like Unity and to a lesser extent KDE, it just, it's, it's been the same. And it's basically the same interface as Windows 95. Because a while ago, you know, we worked out what worked friggin' 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, we don't need to keep changing it. We don't need these apps and tablets everywhere. Something simple, just a nice little start button in the corner. So anyway, let's uh, get a restarting. And, um, and let's see... Uh, Let's see my first impressions, eh? Okay, so we booted up straight into the Lubuntu desktop. I haven't had to log in because I did um, ask to log in automatically in the install process. So let's have a look around the desktop and see what's changed, see what's seen, what stayed the same, and um, all that good stuff. Okay, so we've got the quick launch icons down here at the bottom. This is the file manager. It's, uh, what's it, PC Man FM. Uh, which is the uh, file manager they've used for quite some time now. Uh, it's a pretty good one, very fast, very responsive, does the job very quickly. So, um, yeah, as you can see there, that, that's my uh, home folder, with, which is empty, of course, because it's just a fresh new install. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, stayed the same. So this here is the web browser, and this is Mozilla Firefox. Now, for the last few editions of Lubuntu, they actually used... Uh, Chromium, which is the open source variant of Google Chrome. Now, of course, Google Chrome itself is supported on uh, pretty much most forms of Linux. At least um, it's definitely supported on Lubuntu and the Ubuntu variants. Uh, and I generally do recommend people have an in, uh, like a, have it installed, even if it's not their primary browser, because it does have built-in Flash capabilities, which are not really well supported elsewhere in uh, Linux and Ubuntu. So this is a change. This is new. By and large, it's not a major change because to install any software, it's uh, as easy as just uh, going through the install process, which is in... Ooh, do, 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 do. Where do we go? Preferences. It's in, it would be in System Tools, Synaptic pa Package Manager, Lubuntu Software Center. And, uh, of course, you do have to type in the password. Uh, so, yeah, you can install new software. Uh, this looks very familiar. You can go to the Internet. 
And then this gives you a list of you know various BitTorrent clients, browsers, Claws Mail, Evolution, uh, Firefox, also already installed, um, Midori. That's another lightweight browser. You've got all your software there that you can install. Ubuntu, Ubu Fox extensions for Firefox. That's Ubuntu specific extensions for Firefox. You've got some um, chat, uh, BitTorrents. Yeah, so you've got the uh, you've got the works in there. You've got fonts, you know, themes and tweaks. All of this stuff, reasonably straightforward. Very quick loading software installer. All of this stuff is free, as far as I'm aware. Um, so that's all good. Education, not much in there. You, yeah, so you, anything that's uh, that's missing from the, the menus here is just easily installable through the Lubuntu Software Center. If you want something a little more advanced, then you are much more likely to be a fan of... Um, yeah, Synap Synaptic Package Manager, um, which has all of the packages available. So that's installed uh, by default as well, Synaptic Package Manager. Um, so Firefox, what else we got here? Leafpad, that's just the, uh, the plain text editor. What else? Calculator, Image Viewer, these are all pretty... Uh, I don't know why you'd open up an Image Viewer just as an application, you usually associate it with a file type. Graphics, so you don't have the GIMP, which is the um, it's it's the most commonly used graphical editor on uh, on uh, Linux. It's usually installed with a lot of distributions, but because this is a lightweight distribution and it actually fits onto a CD, so it even uh, you don't even need a DVD to actually write to it. You only need a, a, a small CD because it's about 650 megabyte image. It's only about 650 megabytes to download and, and install it on. So obviously they're going to have to cut out some of the bigger, more uh, elaborate pieces of software here. Um, Pigeon, Internet Messenger. And that's a pretty that's a pretty fine communication tool. So what you can do is you can add your, your Facebook account, your ICQ, MSN, Yahoo, and you can sort of use this as a, a conduit for all your chatting needs, which is pretty awesome. And then it just sort of goes down there into the... Uh, into the system tray. I think you need to configure it through the preferences. Um, where's it go? Interface, show system tray icon. And I think that's how you, uh, yeah. So it's there if you wanna. So that's pretty cool. And as you can see, very responsive. It still hasn't uh, lost its responsiveness. And this is running through a uh, virtual machine which um, means that it's even taking a bit of a performance hit. So you've got um, Audacious, which I'm, that's a piece of software I'm not overly familiar with. It's just playlist software, so you can just uh, watch all your, uh, listen to rather, all your MP3s, um, which is all, uh, all well and good. Possibly uh, not a fan if you are a Spotify user. GUVC View, which you don't actually see um, come uh, packaged with that many Linux distributions. It's your webcam software. Very good, actually, because uh, I'm actually running my webcam now to make this video. It's not going to let me uh, use it. You've got X, F, burn here. No burners are currently available. I'm oh, please unmount and restart the application. So this is uh, wouldn't usually give an error, but it's because I'm in a virtual machine. And uh, yeah, so I can make a new um, disk image, I can burn an audio CD. So that's all pretty good. What else we got here? So this is all, all your pretty standard software. Gnome M player, which is your standard Ooh, media player. Gotta admit, it's a, even though it's a lightweight media player, most people will probably want to install VLC. So your system tools are all here. Software updater, package manager, time and date, task manager, users, groups, your uh, terminal, change your monitor settings, your desktop preferences, so you can change your wallpaper. What can we change our wallpaper to? Something like that. Stretch to fill the entire monitor area. Stretch to, yeah, so you can have all the Bits and pieces, uh, center unscaled. 
Push to fill the whole screen. Fill with background color. So yeah, you've got all these. Uh, so that is the uh, background image there. That's quite nice. Um, so yeah, you don't. You, so yeah, all your settings, all your preferences, all your system tools, all your applications, all come out of this one menu in the most straightforward way possible. This has been how Lubuntu has always done it. There is no change. In fact, this release, just on first impressions, is practically indistinguishable from previous Lubuntu releases, with the only exception that Firefox comes as the default browser rather than Chromium. That is, again, it's easily remedi remed remed remediable, was the word I was going to use, um, if that's something that you feel particularly passionate about. Personally, I have all of them installed just in case, for for whatever reasons, I guess because um, because you know because of reasons, I guess. Um, I like yeah. So there's plenty of ins um, software that you'd probably want to install. It doesn't come with a comprehensive selection software out the box. It doesn't come with OpenOffice or LibreOffice. Uh, it comes with Abbey Word, which a lot of people I know say uh, they prefer to uh, OpenOffice. But um, and, and LibreOffice, but I personally prefer LibreOffice, which is, again, uh, a piece of cake to install. All you do is go to the Lubuntu Software Setting um, Center, go to Office, and you can have... Uh, yeah, you can install all the LibreOffice bits and pieces there. Piece of cake. And you can even do, you know, Word View and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, where, what else is in Office? You've got Document Viewer, and I've got to admit, actually, the Document Viewers in Linux are generally pretty damn good. Actually, they let you view PDF files that um, without having to go through Adobe, because Adobe are very bad at writing. They don't write software for Linux. They used to uh, have some Linux support back in the day, but they decided to get rid of that for reasons unknown. Um, so yeah, the the Office stuff. Is pretty simple. This is numeric. This is your run-of-the-mill spreadsheet stuff. To be honest, if you're not going to install um, LibreOffice or an, an Office package on top of that, I would probably recommend using something like uh, Google Docs, Google Drive as an Office uh, utility. It's what I generally use anyway, but I do have a copy of OpenOffice, um, Li LibreOffice to, uh, to to for for ease of use as well for for local files. So um, all in all, my review, it's pretty much going to be identical to the review that I'd give uh, the previous incarnation of Lubuntu and the one before that and the one before that. And that's the thing I really like about Lubuntu, that Ubuntu just doesn't seem to get, is that when you find a solution that works, when you find a layout, a setup that works, you don't need to change it. You don't need to fix what, what isn't broken. In 1995, Bill Gates and Microsoft released a piece of software which revolutionized the user interface. It put everything into a single menu and it sorted everything for you. It also allowed you to sort all the applications and stuff yourself. Um, it was reasonably quick to use. It was very easy to use and it made computers accessible to a much larger number of people. That interface is nearly identical to this one. Start menu, internet, you know, Firefox browser. Um, like I said, I uh, installed this on um, my mum's netbook when I uh, gave her my old netbook um, because it had some bastardized version of Windows CE, which you really couldn't do very much with. So I installed Lubuntu, I think it's 13.04, actually, and I think it's still on there as well. And she has never had a problem with it. She's found it the most straightforward. She's found it speedy, much speedier than Windows XP. And there has never been uh, a single technical issue that's come up. We've managed to configure it with a printer, with, with her printer. No problem. Uh, it's an HP, it's one of the standard HP models. Um, i got to say, very few compa complaints about this software. Um, I've used previous versions of Lubuntu on multiple screens with, again, very little in the way of problems. Um, I think there is some... Uh, problem with scaling the desktop backgrounds when you have multiple monitors, but it's a cosmetic, a very minor problem with that. And to be fair, it could be something they've actually worked out in this edition. So, uh, but I don't know. They, I do believe they actually timed the releases of LXDE, 
with the releases of Lubuntu, which kind of makes sense. Um, but for all intents and purposes, like I say, this version of Lubuntu is indistinguishable from the last and the one before that and the one before that and the one before that for a good couple of years. Um, so, and, and i got to say, that's only to its credit. That's, you know, this is a fantastic operating system. It beats regular Ubuntu hands down. In my opinion, it beats uh, Kubuntu, the KDE version of Ubuntu hands down as well, because it, it just, it does the job, no questions asked. It does the job quickly. It doesn't have fancy bells and whistles. It's the uh, user interface for someone that just, just doesn't want all the crap thrown in. Doesn't want to waste memory on fading windows or zooming windows or wobbly windows or anything like that. If you just want something straightforward, pretty stable and um and and just for your desktop environment just to not be an issue not be something that you tweak and fiddle around with on a you know daily or weekly basis then this is very much for you and this is probably going to be my primary linux operating system for the next two or three years i think so of course i will keep you updated if that happens to change but this um I find very little to fault with it, to be honest. I find very little to fault with it indeed, uh, because this is exactly why I decided to use Linux as an operating system. And this is this clearly um, takes advantage of all the benefits Linux has to offer over Windows. It's faster. Um, it, it utilizes hardware in a more efficient way. You don't have to worry about viruses. It is easy to use. And... Um, and it just stops your operating system from having to be something that you constantly have to fix. You can also upgrade it without having to interfere with your documents, uh, providing that you set it up in a, in a decent way. And Ubuntu allows you to upgrade as you go. So you don't actually have to stick with the long-term supported version, although I am going to because that's generally the way you, you go for a more stable operating system. So this has been quite a long review, just going through the install process and checking out the first impressions, much longer than it needs to be, and much longer than it will actually take you to install and get up and running yourself, I'd imagine. Uh, I think uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did do an install of the long-term support release of Linux Mint, and I timed myself, and I got everything I needed Steam and, and that kind of stuff. I didn't get the Steam games, the Steam applications, but I got everything uh, set up in in less than two hours, and that's very very quick for an operating system. If you can get your op your computer from from nothing to a fully functioning, fully working operating system in two hours, um, that's that's pretty damn good, and uh, and uh, you know you can't fault that. So that's about it for my Linux review, uh, for my Lubuntu review, rather. But like I say, it does incorporate everything I like about Linux into the distribution um, in terms of its yeah ease of use, speed, consistency, um, and the fact that, yeah, they just don't change everything up uh, once in a while just to keep things interesting. That's the benefit of open source is that they don't have to uh, constantly find things to keep selling you in the same way that the corporate sector has to. So that's about it for, that's about it from me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Take care now.